Farmers up everyone, Tally here. Today I have a very special video. I was just recently invited to a Legion Summit in Irvine to um, go for a preview of Legion. And at first I got invited and I was like, um, preview, I kind of play the beta every day. What else can you guys possibly have for me? But uh, let's say it was very, it was very eventful. Um, we got there and we got showed some new stuff. You'll probably hear about it on YouTube. Um, but the cool part was we got to interview the devs. Now, I've never interviewed anyone before, except for when I talk to people on my stream. And we're talking like in a podcasty style, maybe back a couple, I mean, I don't really invite even a lot of people to come and speak on my live stream in general. So I was really nervous. Uh, we didn't even know that we were gonna be doing interviews with the devs. They just threw us in there. They're like, hey, you streamers and YouTubers, guess what? We're putting you in developer interviews. Ask them whatever you want. And I'm like, oh. Okay, swear to God, like all of us just kind of sc started scrambling around. We're like on laptops, using like the the business center, trying to you know basically uh, you know type out our questions. I asked my community guys, "Do you have any questions? You want me to ask the devs? Let's do it." And I didn't really think I was going to get a lot of answers, but I got probably I would say some of the biggest answers of the interviews that were conducted, um, and I'm going to share that with you uh, today, Friday, and I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it i was able to so it was a solo interview i got about 15 to 20 minutes with tom chilton and chris robinson now tom tom man if he if he says something it's usually probably gonna happen ish right because he's like up there on the uh on the, the on the, you know on the totem pole when it comes to um you know what happened you know i mean i think above tom you would say is jay alan brack right i don't know and uh tom had a i had a really good interview with him and he told me a lot of information that I thought they would not even answer. So the way we're going to do this video is I'm going to play the audio of the interview because I didn't record video, just audio. I, had, I Literally, I just took my phone, turned on the recording program and went like this, like literally just right, you know, on the table. And I was hoping it would record it. It did. Uh, something. So, once again, I was very nervous. A lot of my questions were mumble jumbled. Uh, they understood what I was saying, though. And I even had to have clarification to make sure some of the responses I got were legit because I'm like, I, I need you to speak into this microphone, speak into the flower, and uh, make sure that I got the right info. And I think you guys are going to be very happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the interview. After each question I ask and they answer, I am going to stop and do like a little commentary on it with you guys. Because uh, this is the first time I'm actually going to be listening to myself speak. And I hate listening to myself speak, so it's going to be weird, so I'm going to cringe. So I'm just going to sit here, wait till the audio is done. And then I'm going to talk about it for like a couple seconds. So uh, get ready. Hope you guys enjoy all the uh, cool news. Um, once again, I think Chris Robinson does a lot of the art stuff. So I did ask some artsy questions, even though I'm not really big on art. But I did uh, ask about two things that I wanted to you know, commend them on. As well, figure out what their thought process was behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. So let's get ready. <laughs> all right, so we can just start firing questions off. Right. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so um, in terms of the artifact weapon and the amount of times it would take to max it out, not necessarily uh, that last slot where you have to keep putting points in to get the extra damage or the right, right. tank. Um, ballpark figure, like, what's, what, what's your, you know, how comfortable are you in terms of your vision on how long it would take, let's say, like a mythic raiding guild like Serenity style yeah. players compared to a casual? Right. Play like, like, how long do you think it would take a casual player that plays WoW just like right. every day, I'm, maybe like normal mode? It's a complex question because it changes over time. Right. Right? So as time passes, it'll get faster to level up your artifact, mm -hmm. even if you have never done one before. Right? right? So there's a there's a mechanic to make it faster for alts for and for other specs, mm -hmm. um, but then there's also a mechanic that just makes it faster across the board over time. Oh, okay. And so as people come into the expansion later, that way it's like it's not like oh well you, you'll never be able to play together because you know their you know artifact is so much more powerful than yours that you right. can't you know join their raid or whatever. Right. So over time it just gets faster mm -hmm. and you'll be able to catch up. Better. Okay. Um, now in terms of all right, so they they talked about well. They, he talked to me about, I'm thinking they, like I'm considering myself they, whatever. Um, so I wanted to ask that question because that's one of the main questions I get asked every day on my stream. How long is it going to take me to do my artifact? Is it going to be faster for me as opposed to like Serenity dudes or like Method people or whatever? And uh, I kind of got, now the one thing I noticed that he said that there's going to be a catch-up mechanic across the board. I don't know what that means because I know that you can get the artifact knowledge 
that increases the artifact uh, by percentage that you get 110 more artifact power from like artifact power um, you know items like world quests or whatever so I'm not sure if maybe he's talking about like an account wide buff or a character wide buff so uh, I didn't really go into that many details because once again I only have 15 minutes but um, yeah I thought it was a pretty good answer I mean I think they're pretty confident that people are going to be able to catch up on their alts and their uh, specs I, I mean I'm seriously thinking it's like maybe server wide buffs for in case you create a, a character on each server if it's account wide that'd even be better um, for the long run obviously at first you want to have people work for it alright next question here we go of uh, ray tiers, I know usually I think you guys discuss around two during Gamescom. Is that changed? Are you, is your goal still two, or, or is it possible we might get three this time around? <laughs> uh, well, it's always possible. It's just what it comes at a cost. Of. The but, next expansion. But would that be time. would that be like a goal of yours to try to hit three in like right. maybe the same right. amount of time that we have? It, it sort of depends on on what you consider a tier because we do we do have two. So we have uh, the Nightmare Raid, we have the Suramar Raid, um, the Nighthold, and then. So that's kind of like a, it's, they're almost two different tiers, mm -hmm. um, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, High Mall and Foundry. Right. right. Um, and then we have, uh, in you know, we have a raid plan that'll come out in uh, patch 7.2, and then we have another raid plan that'll come out in a patch that comes after that. And those are completely different tiers. So, oh, wow. so if you consider, if you're, if, you, if you're counting the shipping ones, then that's three. Great. Okay, so we're doing uh, Emerald Nightmare, uh, Nighthold, then that's like its own kind of tier, then tier, then tier? Right. Okay, so that's, right. that would be three then. That's the plan. Oh, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. thank I you. I didn't know if you count the shipping ones or uh, if yeah. like three purely in packs. Oh, no, I always count the shipping ones, gotcha. yeah. Okay, no, thank you. Um, now, in terms of... All right, so you notice I say in terms of a lot. I don't even know why I say that. But isn't that like fucking exciting? Three tiers. That's like, I mean, it's not, he didn't really confirm, like, yes, we're 100% going to have three tiers, but that's their plan. Like, their plan since Gamescom was always two. Everyone was always under the impression two is the plan, two is the plan. But he's basically confirming that we're going to get Emerald, Nightmare, and Nighthold as one tier, and then another one at 7.2, and then another one in a patch after that. That's three raid tiers. That's what we've been wanting. That's what we've been asking for. You know, Draenor was just High Mall, uh, Foundry, one tier, and then HFC, and then that's it. That was two. That that's two tiers of rating, but like three different instanced raids. You know, so it sounds like I mean, if you just listened, he basically confirmed that their goal is for three tiers, and it seems like that even have a patch plan um, for you know the launch raids to be Emerald Nightmare and Nighthold, and then seven point two patch, and then. Seven point, uh, yes, and then the next pass. So three raid tiers is their plan. And when he tells you straight up that's their plan, it's better than hearing at Gamescom we're going to shoot for two again or whatnot. So I think that's super exciting news. Next question. Oh, I killed this interview easily. Uh, Suramar. Now I've been playing WoW for eleven plus years since the beginning, and Suramar is probably one of the most beautiful zones I've ever been in. Nice. So when it comes to like the artwork and uh, all like the 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 time that it took, like what was like just what was just like the, I guess, the thought process behind Suramar? Because I know that when I've been in every stage of the Alpha and like every time it just got better and better and now it's just like mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. I'm glad that you think that, man. Mission accomplished. Yeah, right. Uh, we, you know, uh, when we started on Suramar, it's very much a night elven driven society in a way, right? Like they're different elves, obviously. They evolve somewhat differently, but we wanted that, um, that sort of inherent initial reaction to feel Night Elven. And for people who are familiar with that race and enjoy it to really connect to that and be drawn to it. That comes with some problems, right? Like there, it's a pretty monochromatic palette, palette that we're using for Night Elves. It's purple and blue, right. some silver, all those cool colors. You can't really do that in a zone without having anything kind of pop. So that zone was actually interesting. And, and typically what happens is the ones that are the most difficult for us to ultimately land on a color theme for end up being the best. Right. Because it's a lot of that kind of like trial and error, putting some stuff in, changing the sky color, changing the grass color, and finding kind of that harmonious balance. And then with, you know, with an area like Suramar that has such a strong underlying theme of that kind of, you know, like just the zone itself being this wild forest that was magically affected at some point in the past and has been kind of growing right. from that point forward. And then the area that's within this protective shield that, they, that has never seen the light of day in 
so in the exact same number of years, it offers us that opportunity to kind of have that that contrast between the two. Right. And with that, we really then open the doors to like, what can we do that's not just a green grass, blue trees, purple this, silver, whatever, so that still feels that open. And we kind of went crazy in that realm of like, let's do, you know, these other colors, this other yellow, orange, kind of pinkish color scheme right. that we feel like still feels similar, right. but it will give us that contrast, kind of balance back and forth, and then ultimately ended up, you know, kind of honing in on what, using what we do in the exterior area to kind of inform what that protected area within that bubble was going to look like. Yeah. No, I'm, once again, great job on that Thanks, area. Man. Like I. It's actually really cool. We have a great level design team now, and we don't talk about those guys often or enough, in my opinion, um, because they're where the rubber hits the road, right? So we have an amazing art team, and they do trees and rocks, and they build skyboxes and paint these amazing textures. And they're awesome. If it wasn't for the level design team, yeah. that's all useless, because those are the guys that actually take those assets and put them in the game and mm -hmm. work with these guys in terms of like where, the, what's the pathing, where are the POIs, and then set up all those vistas and set up all the shots to really help the artwork stand. Wow. And that group's growing, and we've hired some really talented people. So I think that's why you see that progression continue to, or, or things continue to improve, because it's not just yeah. us learning how to paint textures better. It's actually the people who implement and are getting more skilled, and we're hiring that team and building it up to where it is now. Yeah, it's like the team effort and hard work just coming to fruition in the zone, in each little zone like that. Yeah. All right. Um, so, all right. So talking about Suramar, um I really do like you know that was being brutally honest. Like I think Surmar is one of the most beautiful places I've seen in Legion so far. So being that I was sitting with the art guy, I then just, just want to grill Tom with questions after questions. I also wanted to get some artsy stuff in there, and because I've seen how amazing Suramar is, how beautiful the you know the the hold like the, the what is it called the the night hold area is. I kind of want to know like what like the, you know what the thought process was behind it. Like you know what were you like, what the hell were you thinking when you made this amazing zone? So uh, more questions. Here we go. With those new tiers that we were talking about, will there be this time and, and Legion maybe any new dungeons coming out with them? You know how like ICC we had like three right. dungeons come out. Yep. We, we we do plan to release dungeons through the patch cycle. Okay. Um, can't commit to exactly which ones will have what dungeons. Although it, uh, other than the first patch, the first patch uh, seven one will go on the PTR very quickly around the time the Legion is shipping mm. um, because we intend to get that out pretty quickly after Legion comes out and mm. we'll have a dungeon and it's pretty mega. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. So it'll be like a new dungeon off more than what we have right now in the beta. Right. That's amazing. Okay. Um, and then... All right. So that's a big one. That's right there with the three raid tiers. I mean, I think a lot of us for uh, the last couple of expansions, we've wanted new dungeons to come out with raid tiers or with patches. Um, you know, I think for a few expansions, we've been kind of stuck with the same 9, 10, 9, 10 dungeons. And then as we go on, like, it just gets boring. So, I mean, that was basically a confirmation that uh, 7.1 uh, will have a dungeon released uh, other than the ones that we're currently playing right now in the beta. So, you know, aside from Quarter Stars and aside from Arcway and whatever else we currently have. So, I think that's really exciting news that they're going back to those roots where... You know, with content patches, there's also, you know, semi-relevant uh, PvE patches, you know, like dungeons. Uh, and now the question is, will those dungeons drop the same gear as the 7.0, or will it be better, or will it just scale? We don't know, but uh, let's continue. Next question. I'm, I'm, once again, this this interview, awesome. And by the way, sorry for being such a, I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> every time I ask a question, I'm like, what am I saying? For um, the Mythic Plus dungeons, uh -huh. uh, by the way, those are also amazing. Cool. Like, that's just cool. That I, I love the system itself. Awesome. Um, is there any chance that we might see any kind of like raid tier or dungeon tier for Mythic Plus? Because Mythic Plus almost seems like it's its own end game for a lot right. of people. You know, right. people are going to be you like, mean like in terms of a set. Yeah, like set like with right. bonuses and stuff like that. Or is that not something that we might? see? I, I can definitely see us. We don't have that planned right now. Okay. Um, I can see us going down that road uh, during the patch content. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just because, you know, it's experimental for us, and so we don't know, you know, do, do players want that? We don't know yet. Maybe they would, maybe it would just drive them irate for some reason. Yeah. Like, we're not sure yet. We have to see how it plays out a little bit first. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and now for attunement. All right. Um, I'm going to rewind that a little bit because you heard me say the word attunement. That's what was exciting. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was a question asked from my Twitter community. They were just like, are there going to be any mythic tier because you know for me personally like i said in the interview i consider mythic plus almost its own end game you know like let's say you don't want to do you know 20 man mythic or you don't want to do 30 heroic 10 15 heroic whatever it is flex heroic and you just want to dedicate your time with your four good buddies to making your end game getting 
almost mythic gear and I'm, I was just wondering, like, are we going to have tier gear in Mythic? But then that would kind of complicate things. You know, maybe a two-piece from Mythic Plus is better than a two-piece from a raid, and all should go, you know, hell races. All right, next question. It's going down that road uh, during the patch content. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just because, you know, it's experimental for us, and so we don't know, like, do players want that? We don't know yet. Maybe they would, maybe it would just drive them irate for some reason. Yeah. Like, we're not sure yet. We have to see how it plays out a little bit first. Awesome, awesome. Um, and now for attunements, um, well, I guess you call them attunements, like uh, Court of Stars yeah. and um, the Arcway. They're like yeah. the little Arcway, mini attunements. Yeah. I think that's amazing that uh -huh. we're kind of bringing that element, element back into the game. Right. Um, are we going to see more of that in the future, maybe for raids? I know it's a little crazy to say, yeah. let's not go back to like crazy Nax or, totally, or totally. Kara, but do you see yourselves uh, maybe making some sort of like small attunement just to get into like a new tier of raiding in the future? Right. Um, Yes, we do plan to dip our toes a little bit more into attunements, but not not like whole hog the way we used to do in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's like everything required an attunement. Yeah. yeah, it's just a question of how hardcore it is. Right. Um, so, and that's why we kept it to to the to the shipping dungeons. We do plan to have one for that pack seven one dungeon okay. that I'm referring to okay. that shall remain unnamed. <laughs> you can tell me I won't say anything. I signed all <laughs> I saw all kinds of paperwork. I'll be thrown in the slammer if I say anything. <laughs> no, you know, just, won't find your bodies. Um, It'd be worth it. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> um, so for my community. All right. Um, so that was another big one for me because I am really stoked about, like, the attunements when it comes to, like, the Arcway and Court of Stars. Right now, those are two dungeons that you haven't heard in Legion where um, I think Arcway, you have to complete, like, the Suramar quest line to unlock it. And then Court of Stars is another five-man dungeon that you have to unlock by getting, I think, like, it's a it's a big process. It's like a week plus process to get to get these dungeons unlocked, and one of them you need like um, you know six thousand inter revered to be able to unlock it. You have to follow a quest line, and then finally you know the one quest will take you to the dungeon to open it and go in there. So I mean, I was really I was really wondering like, are they going to do more attunements? And as you've heard, they're they, you know they're going to be doing more attunements for more smaller things in Legion, which I think is really awesome. I think you you know having to work a little bit to unlock some simple PvE content like a dungeon doesn't really hurt anybody. It's just another way of just creating content for us to go through it, uh, you know, get some rep, do some uh, world questing to get more reputation with, let's say, the Nightfall and, and get our dungeons unlocked. But to hear that they're going to be doing it in the future and more in Legion, that's really awesome. Community, all the time while I'm streaming, I always see things like, man, you're... Your HP is like four million as a bear. Right. Your HP is two point three million, two point three million as a as a prop paladin. Yeah. So um, for me, I don't mind at all. Um, I actually have like bigger numbers. You can go as high as two billion for all I care, you know. Right. But uh, in the future, are we gonna have like another squish? It seems like we're going like squish, no squish, yeah. squish, no squish. Yeah. So in eight point oh, we're gonna just go back down. That, that is the current plan. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, I kind of wish that we would have squished again in seven zero, kind of seeing where the numbers have 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 landed out. Mm. Um, you know, particularly on the on the hit point side, and then of course, you know, once you do the hit points, you have to do everything. But uh, it is it's a very significant undertaking because there are a lot of spells and items that you have to touch up manually to make them work with Squish. Mm -hmm. um, you have to you know trinkets and right. procs and stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff that you have to go back and just really tweak manually, um, set bonuses, etc. And uh, very time consuming to do that, yeah. and uh, so it's not gonna happen for 7 0, but there is a plan to do it soon. <laughs> okay, cool. Um. All right, so the squish, once again, another big um, confirmation that we kind of needed from the, you know, that the community wanted from the devs was is there gonna be a squish? You know, are we gonna go higher than what we have right now? Right now in Legion, like I said, I don't really care about the health. You can give me 5 billion, 2 billion, 200,000, I'll tank with anything. But um, yeah, I mean, I think they mentioned it a while back, but no one really maybe heard them say it or no one can go, can go back to whatever interview it was of them saying, you know, our plan is to like squish an expansion, don't squish it, squish it, don't squish it. So now because they're not squishing, they squish Draenor, I don't even know how, that's still a lot of HP. Um, Legion is not a squish, so it's going to get higher, but then 8.0, whatever that is, that's going to be another squish. So that was just the kind of a com com confirmation. And now for uh, the animations, by the way, amazing animations for all the classes. Oh, they're just... Awesome. So I want a little bit. What was the thought process behind the animations? Like, what, what made you guys say, you know what? For Legion, we just want every class to just all their abilities to just get revamped and look different. It was just kind. Of, is it kind of like the equivalent of like uh, Draenor's, uh, you know, character models? That's like the new, and then this expansion, yeah. it's animation. It's, a, it's that, and I think it's that 
we're always taking a cross section of the game as we go along and looking at like the things that just start to stand out because of the fidelity of, of everything else is sort of drawing attention to like, wow, that all of a sudden looks bad and it never used to. Kind it of used thing. to look old, now it looks old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, inherently like um, MMOs tend to have that kind of floaty combat feel, right? Feel, right? Where like yeah. you could be on the corner of the room and I could be facing this way and fighting yeah. you and doing damage kind of thing. So. Yeah. That's always something we wanted to address, and it's a challenge that we always take on in terms of like how can we make it popular and feel like you're interacting with a thing that you're that you're beating up on. Um, yeah. That really, this time around, felt kind of like it's got it's old enough now where we need to do something with it, and it's a good chance to time to kind of take a chance and make or take a risk and really do something that could be polarizing. But ultimately, what it, what we wanted it to be was that pulling you closer into the world, getting you closer into your character in the sense of really feeling like you're immersed in the world and you're and you're really connected with the thing that you're fighting against. Yeah, whoever did Fury Warrior needs like a raise immediately. I don't know who that was, but Fury Warriors just are just. I mean, I'm really good. Yeah, I because of just the animations um, in the game. Like for me personally, in the 11 years I've been playing, well, I've always just been a tank. I've been healing. I've been DPSing every spec just because I want to see all the new animations. They look great. So what race do you play? Uh, for for your for your tank. Oh, uh, dwarf paladin. Do you feel like the? Did you see any racial difference? But like, were you bummed out about using any kind of racial animation? You know, in terms of like, certain races have like the, the twirl attack or whatever. No, we had to really. sacrifice some of that stuff. To pull yeah, off. no, it didn't really affect me too much. No, okay. not really. Cool, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really don't care about that stuff. But I just want to talk about animations because you know we had character models in Draenor, and now we had animation changes. So it seems like every expansion to doing some sort of like animated graphical enhancement to the game. So I think maybe next expansion we're going to get another graphical update and then after the year after that or expansion that we'll get like another technical ability up animation upgrade. By the way, Fury Warriors, no joke. If you guys out there in YouTube land have not played Fury Warriors, you should in Legion Beta if you have access or if you want to watch videos. The animations are out of control. I'm pretty sure I have a video about Fury Warrior animations. All right, next question. All right. Now, uh, you probably gotten this one a few times today already. So now, content droughts at the end of the expansion. That's like the big, everyone's always freaking out, you know. Um, we had a pretty big one in SOO. ICC wasn't too big. Uh, this one looks like it's going to be a little bit long. So do you have like any, I don't know if the right word I'm looking for is a uh, phrase, is contingency plans, or do you guys have like a little TOGC, Charlie Grand Crusaders, kind of right. hidden around just for the end of an expansion? Uh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been begging for that because I, 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 people are like, oh, I hate those. I hate a TOGC. There's just no trash. There's just bosses. I'm like, that was the beauty of it. You just right. go from one boss to another for progression. It's surprising so, how polarizing that is, yeah. the, the no trash. Yeah. 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 But for, so do you have like any plan to kind of counteract that drought because there's like I guess there's right. two ways of thinking like um, if there's no content for a long amount of time people will go crazy we have no content mm -hmm. or if something happens like with like Nax or a 40 you know and it comes out but it's only out for six months seven months it's like well we didn't you didn't give us enough time to finish it what do right. we do now right. so like is there any balance you guys are looking for in Legion there is definitely a balance that we're looking for and um, we, we have a you know what we consider a really good patch plan for for Legion okay um, it certainly has more to it than the Warlords patch plan does. We modeled it more around what like the Mists of Pandaria patch plan was, awesome. um, with with some differences and you know some things that we consider improvements and all that. Um, you'll see that's you know still yet to come, but uh, we feel pretty good about where that is. Part of it though is also correctly anticipating how long we're going to take to make the next expansion. Yeah. And that's exactly. really the tough thing, and that's really what had us kind of come, come up short on patch content mm -hmm. for Warlords, mm -hmm. was that we were pretty well convinced that we were going to be able to make Legion way faster than we were actually able to make it. Right. And so we did not plan to have this kind of content drought between, uh, you know, between Hellfire and, and now, mm -hmm. but uh, that's kind of what we ended up with. And so now what we're trying to do is, is have a better sense of you know what our projections are going to be for the next next expansion, and make sure that that the Legion patch content fills that gap better. Awesome, yeah, people are gonna be really happy about that. Um, one, more one more. All right, so that's the point where the guy says you have one more question. There's like a moderator in there. He's like, yeah, one more question. Okay. So I thought that was really exciting to find out. Um, Mr. Pandaria patch plan. Um, it worried me a little bit, but not too much because I uh, tell me that them telling me that the Mr. Pandaria patch plan is what they're trying to go after but better kind of reminds me of them going back to saying there's gonna be three raid tiers because that's how many we had in mop right we had the um the the heart of fear with the thunder with the you know we had a shot of fear um thunder king and then uh garage 
And I mean, that was, that was I mean, if that's their patch plan, I don't mind. I think Mr. Pandaria once again is top, one of my top three expansions, maybe even number two. Honestly, I've been telling people for a while now. Uh, I love the new lore, the new characters, new look of the enemies that we've never seen before in WoW. And uh, if they were to do Legion after MOP, but maybe fix the drought, because they didn't really address the drought. They just said they have a really solid patch plan with some, you know, new stuff here and there. So I'm hoping that new stuff is maybe at the end. I'm hoping maybe a filler raid, like a TOGC. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, it seems like they're pretty confident right now about the, th uh, you know, the three tiers and the patch plan. So last question. Here it comes. Question? Okay. Um, well, questing? amazing once again cool. taking like that adventure mode kind of stuff from diablo is just uh, out of this world this is keeping me and everyone else more interested is that going to scale as we go yes. higher yeah. so if i'm like 880 item level will i see an 880 plus in the world uh, quest? potentially well, we'll have, uh, we don't know exactly how far it's going to scale yet okay um, as far as the floor right the, the ceiling is always you it know as high as it, will, as yeah. high as it goes um the floor scales at a couple different tiers now, so it'll, it'll go up to essentially heroic item level and then essentially to mythic dungeon item level mm -hmm. as the floor um, as your item level improves. Mm -hmm. um, how far it goes beyond that yeah. in terms of the floor scaling up if you go past that in future content patches, mm -hmm. we'll have to see. Okay. The plan is to keep them relevant throughout the expansion and to continue to add new world quests so that oh, you okay. get new stuff mixed in with the, the existing stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, um, instead of just trying to replace it and then you have like less content than you had right. when, when it first shipped and all that. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm good. All right. All right. So that's basically the end of the uh, interview. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, I hope I asked a lot of questions that were lingering on people's minds, which, I mean, like I said, those questions were based on what my community had concerns over, which were mainly the amount of uh, tiers of rating because we want more than two so that we can make the expansions last longer. Um, attunements were a big thing, adding dungeons throughout the expansion. The content drought question, wish there would have been more on that, but not too much. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I mean, that was my first ever interview of any developer for any game. And luckily it was with uh, Blizzard. So once again, shout out to Blizzard for inviting us to the Legion Summit. Thank you to Tom Chilton and Chris Robinson. I think his name is Chris Robinson. Hopefully I've been saying his name the entire round. I'm pretty sure it's Chris because I've heard him. I think I've talked to him before. Um, I'm actually Googling his name. Hey, he's the art director. Yes, I'm not crazy. He is the art director. Okay, Chris Robinson. Okay, so thank you to Chris Robinson for also answering my questions about the uh, Suramar and the Fury animations. And I uh, hope you guys out there in YouTube land enjoy this video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, man. Are you excited? Are you excited about maybe possibly having three raid tiers? Like I said, he basically said that's the plan. Uh, usually when they say this is the plan... Um, this deep into the beta about launch, I'm hoping we get there. And, um, you know, him talking about the, having the same Mr. Pandaria patch plan kind of solidifies that comment. Uh, having attunements for dungeons, having dungeons come out with different patches. I'm excited. If you're excited, post in the comments. PDPers, I'm sorry, bro. Go check out the PDPers that came to the summit because I had no PDP questions. Not my thing, bros.